Okay, so today we're talking about integration of curves below the x-axis. So if you remember in general, if we want to integrate a function, then it will give you the area between the limits of that function and the x-axis. However, if this function is below the x-axis, then something weird happens because if we integrate this between 0 and 3 of this function, it's not going to give us the area, it's going to give us minus of that value. So if you calculate an integral where the function is below the x-axis, you just need to be careful when you're trying to deduce what the area is. So we can look at a few examples. So first off, let's see what happens. If we integrate this function between 0 and 3 of x times x minus 3 dx. So this corresponds to this area. But if we integrate this, we should get a negative value. So let's just do that. We need to expand this out first. Integral between 0 and 3 of x squared minus 3x dx. And then we can integrate this now. So x squared turns to x cubed divided by 3. And then this minus 3x turns to minus 3x squared divided by 2. And we just need to evaluate this at the limits. So 3 and 0. So let's do that. Let's put these numbers in. We get 3 cubed divided by 3, which is just 3 squared. So that's 9. Minus 3 times 3 squared, which is 3 cubed, or 27, divided by 2. And then if you put the lower limit 0, because these are just functions of x, this is just going to come out to be 0. So this first bracket uh, is the first term, and then if we put 0, we get 0. So it's just this value that we uh, need to worry about. And then since 9 is the same as 18 divided by 2, um, then this answer is going to be actually minus 9 divided by 2, or minus 4.5. So we see we do get a negative number here. And so to find the area that we're after, we just need to take the negative value of this to take it positive. So we deduce that the area A is equal to 9 divided by 2, or 4.5. So that's just something to be aware about. We're now going to look at an example where we have a function that's both below and above the x-axis. So we need to be even more careful about the limits. OK, so now we're looking at a much trickier example, because we have this function that's above the x-axis here, between minus 3 and 0 and below the axis between 0 and 1. So if we were to integrate between minus 3 and 1, well, this region would give us a positive number because it's above the x-axis. This region would give us a negative number because it's below the x-axis. So if we do this all at the same time, these answers are going to cancel slightly, and we're going to get an answer that's completely wrong. It's not going to uh, correspond to the area of this function. So our strategy here to find the true area is to just integrate each section on its own. And then we can kind of think about what the area is going to be. So if I denote a for the area, then this is going to give us a positive number. So the area of this section is just the integral between minus 3 and 0 of this function, which I'll just call f of x for now, dx. And then we said that since this is below the x-axis, it's going to be negative the area. So to get the total area, we just put a minus sign here. And we integrate between 0 and 1 of this function, f of x dx. And now if we evaluate this integral, it's going to give us the exact area. So the exact calculations of the integral aren't too interesting. I'll just um, give you an outline of how this works. Um, integral between minus 3 and 0. So to integrate f, which is this cubic, it's uh, easier to first expand out these brackets. And if you do that, it's going to come out to be x cubed plus 2x minus 3x dx. So this is the cubic expanded out. And then it would be the same for this integral, except the limits are different. So I'll just write f of x again, dx. And then it's just a matter of integrating these uh, terms, term by term. So I'll just do this step. It's x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared. I've just realized this term should be uh, an x squared here. So this would become uh, 2x cubed divided by 3. And then this uh, turns to 3x squared divided by 2. So this is f of x integrated. And then it's just a matter of evaluating the limits. So minus 3 and 0. And then this integral is going to be the same. I can rewrite it out again. x to the 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2, but now between the limits of 0 and 1. So if you do the algebra, I'm not going to do all of it, but I'll just um, I'll say that this these brackets evaluate to 45 over 4. So this would be the area of this first hump. And then the second uh, bump, then this evaluates to plus 7 over 12. 
and this is a positive number because you've got the minus sign here. So this bracket would actually evaluate to minus 7 over 12, but because we put the minus in, then this is a positive number. And so we have uh, the sum of these two positive numbers, and this gives us the total area, which comes out to be 71.6. So this is the area we are after. And this would actually be a good exercise for you if you want to um, try out the calculations and make sure you get the right answer. So I hope you understand the idea a bit more now. It's just, you have to be careful that if you have a function that's below the x-axis at any point, you just want to split up uh, the integration. So just split up all these limits. So you have these different regions and you just consider the total area separately.